YouTube, I ain't been feeling it. And if I ain't feeling it, you ain't getting no videos. But you're getting one today. And we're going to talk about muzzleloading. First of all, be careful. There's bears in here now. Bears. Me and my brother did this exact same video last week. And I was editing it. And it didn't upload. And now it's somewhere lost in the cloud. So I guess we're going to shoot it again. Okay, so this may wind up being a multi-part series. Because there's... This is relatively simple and relatively complicated all at the same time. And like when I got into muzzleload and I had no idea what I was doing and there wasn't really any good videos on YouTube showing you how to do this. So, man, that's good. Black rifle coffee company. We're gonna get into the different types of muzzleloaders first before we get anything else. I have a series of firearms here that I have picked out to do this video. This, after I've beat the piss out of it against my desk because that's what I do. That is your more traditional side lock. Obviously, self-explanatory, locks on the side. And then you're gonna have in lines where the primer in line with the charge and the bullet in the barrel. It's in line, in line, side lock. Now there's gonna be two different kinds of side locks. You can have a flint lock and a cap lock. These, you quite literally put a little cap on that nipple right there. And when the hammer falls, strikes, throws it into the chamber with the powder, nuts the powder, sends the projectile out. Okay? Okay. Here's another inline that I have that has a scope on it that has decided it does not want to latch. So that's why it's in here after resulting in the miss of a whitetail doe. At about 100 yards broadside, it is on the bench for the rest of the season until we get something figured out. But anyway, enough about that. Now, the big deal between side locks and end lines is both of these guns are loaded the same. The only difference is on the side lock, I assume you could use compacted powder pellets Compacted powder pellets? Compacted powder pellets? This is my possible bag. That's nice. Very nice. Okay, anyway, after before all my primers went everywhere and the cap came off of my deal. And while we were off camera, we spilled primers all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Those are cleaned up. Anyway, yeah, powder pellets. Okay, so you will have two different kinds of powder. And like, I run Pyrodex, which is just triple FG uh, Pyrodex. It's not really a black powder. Of course, then you can run like Blackhorn 209, or if you can get a hold of actual black powder, you can use that. But a lot of guys like these little pellets you buy, and like 777 pellets, and all these are, are 50 grain pellets, but they have a hole in the center for an inline system where your primer is in line, and it, it's supposedly more efficient and burns better. I can't really tell much of a difference. Uh, of course, my gun's not gonna be the same as your gun, so. Just switch it up and you can try to what you like. One of the really big advantages and a lot of the reasons guys use these individual 50 grain powder kegs is they know that I can drop two of those in the barrel and there's 100 grains of powder and it's right. I don't think they burn as efficiently as loose powder because, I mean, there's a little bit of room around the wall between the barrel of the wall and these where they sit down in there. And then there's the hole in the middle. And there's just a lot of dead space. At least with this, it's compacted bullets on top of it. And I think it burns better. I think loose powder burns better, but that's just me. You run what you run or run. You run what your gun likes. Like I said, in both my cap locks and my inlines, I run loose powder, Pyrodex, 100 grains. And one of the big advantages, even though you have to have a powder flask and a measure and the powder, as well with the pellets, you can just drop two in. One of the big advantages of these is you can play with it 10 grains either way and find out, you can really fine tune your gun in 
and you can switch up bullets and powder and finally find something that works for your rifle and really get, you know, the best accuracy you can. Another thing is I shoot 100 grains just because it's easy to remember for all my muzzle loaders. Um, like this CVA Wolf is rated for 150 grains, which is a significant amount. Um, I guess you can shoot 150 if you really want to. I don't think you gain much. I mean, you gain a little bit of velocity, but I lose accuracy with more powder. So I just stick with 100 and that's where my gun likes to shoot. And it's friendly on my shoulder and I've never had a deer walk from it. And I've heard a lot of guys say that they don't use loose powder because they say, I wouldn't want to have to carry a pound of powder and a powder flask and a measure and the caps and everything else in my possibles bag. There's my possibles bag. That's what I keep all my stuff in, in my backpack, so all it's right there together. Now, a lot of those guys say they don't use loose powder because they wouldn't want to have to carry all this stuff. I don't carry all this stuff. Let me show you. Before I show you, we're going to get in and have a load of muzzleloader. So, this is a muzzleloader. You load it from the muzzle, okay? Um, basically, is this is your chamber. So, this is a breech plug. On the, these newer CVAs, you can just thread these out by hand. Um, that's one of the big benefits of an inline is you can see plumb through that. These are super easy to clean because you can just run right through it both ways, just like a center fire rifle. So you can take the breech plug out. Of course, your primer will sit in your breech plug. Throw a spark through that little hole right there, lighten your powder charge. So consequently, your powder would have to go in first and then your bullet would go down the barrel. Let's say we put Let's say we put 100 grains of powder in, two parts, okay? Or, you know, we would take this, bring it down to 100, which is where it's sitting now, take our powder charge, fill that up. Of course, you're gonna smoother off the top, just like baking a, baking a cake measuring flour, and you would dump that in your barrel. Okay, so we're gonna put that back in there for safety's sake. And then, okay, so whether you're using loose powder or but for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna use these. So one, two, our powder's in. Then you're gonna seat your bullet. Put your bullet in, take your ramrod. And sometimes, especially if your muzzle loader's gunked up or hadn't been cleaned in a while, don't want to fight you once they get started. Okay, well, like that. That is one of the biggest downfalls to these side locks is that you cannot run these individual compacted powder kegs because as we're in inline, your spark goes through the center of that hole and burns it from the inside out. These, you put a cap on the nipple the hammer will fall, hit the cap, the cap will spark, go sideways into the chamber, and then ignite your powder charge, sending your bullet out the barrel. So, and uh, it's another thing I need to mention. On all, most all your inlines, and I mean 99.99989% of them, are going to use a 209 shot shell primer. We'll use this one for example because, all right, we're going to use this one for an example because it's empty. That would sit in there just like so, ta-da. As where on this one with these side locks that have an actual nipple, you won't be able to use a 209 primer. You're going to have to get some number 11 percussion caps. And that cap will sit. right after I drop it, will sit on that nipple. And then you can take your hammer and set it down on half cock. And that way when a deer walks out, all you have to do is pull the hammer back, set your set trigger and send it. So, um, one more time, just to clear. This is your barrel. Okay, say that this that's your barrel, and there's the walls of your barrel, and the bullet's coming out this way, okay? This would be like you're looking down again. And then you have your breech plug, of course. 
So this is your chamber, this is your open space. Your primer goes in right here. Or on the cap lock, it would go right here. Pow, pow, pow. Anyway, so of course your powder, it's gonna have to go in first. And then you will put in your bullet. Bullet. And then you would take your ramrod and ram that down so that way spark goes through your breech plug, ignites your powder, send your bullet out the barrel. Or if it's cap lock, put your cap on, spark comes in, comes in through the side, ignites your powder charge, bullet goes out the barrel. So anyway, back to Guy's argument of they don't like to use loose powder because they don't have to carry that and that and that and that and that. That's a bullet. Can you see it? Where'd you go? And that. Okay. I don't carry any of this stuff except for this. And that goes in my possibles bag. What I do is get you some of these tubes that have caps on them. Get them, get ones that fit good. You do not want that cap off dumping all your powder out because when you really need that and reach in there to grab it and you don't have it because it's all dumped out, you're going to be very, very sad. And yes, it's happened to me. So what I do on that sense, especially with my side locks, and actually I'm going to make some reloads real quick. So I'm using, I'm opening a new deal of powder because that was last year's powder. So I'm going to fill this up. Right after I dump a majority of it on my desk. What an idiot! <sighs> That'll be fun to clean later. Yeah. So, anyway. So, I put new... I dumped this old stuff out that was last year's and put some new Pyrodex in there. And here's what I do. I take my powder flask, and that's empty. That's empty. I take that... Measure out, set it to 100, because that's how many grains you're shooting. Measure you out 100 grains of black powder. And then smooth that off like a measuring cup when you're baking cookies or something, you know? Yeah. And then, so you get 100 grains of Pyrodex. You're going to dump that in. all of it. You're going to dump that in. So then you have a reload. And then that way when you're out, you're out hunting. Okay. The deer walks up and you shoot at a deer and miss or you hit it and there's another one and you need to reload or there's a wounded animal or something. You can reach in your possibles bag, grab that reload, flip the cap off, dump it in, and then your powder, bullet, take your ramrod, ram your bullet down, grab a cap, slap her on, you're ready to go again in a couple of seconds. That's what I do. Hope that helps. Well guys, I hope that helped. That's how you load a muzzle loader, and that's the basic concepts of muzzle loading. Um, you can shoot 209 primers, you can shoot caps, you can use loose powder, you can make a mess all over your desk that you gotta clean up. You can, you can do it all. You do it all. Play around there. You can buy these bullets. Muzzle loading's cheap, guys. These are the 40 bucks for a pound of powder. And then you can buy all these bullets. This is what my gun's like. That's what I shoot. So I hope that helped. You guys all have a happy new year and a safe season. Stay safe.